Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. Today we'll do some more ratio and ratio and proportion problems that we start started in last video. This is our second video in the series of six, two of six problems dealing with the notion of ratios and proportions. If you want to understand the conceptual difference between the two, uh, two, uh, two, 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 two concepts, ratios and proportions, that is, you should watch the first video. In the first video, we went through the two fundamental differences between the ratios and proportions. They are not the same. Ratios and proportions are two different animals. The two terms should not be used synonymously. Do you understand? Let's begin our work. The very first problem is on the blackboard already, question number 11, because we did 1 through 10 in the first video. It says a bag, a bag contains a bag contains red, blue, and green marbles. We are told that one quarter of them are red, two third of them are blue. We are further told that 60 of them are green. The question simply is how many red marbles are there, how many blue marbles are there. So let's find out, shall we? So we know one quarter of them are red. So here is the red, this is one quarter. We also know that two third of them are blue. So here is blue, two third. We can add up the two quantities and we can figure out what fraction uh, what fraction of the total must be the green. As you can see, we have different denominators, 4 and 3. So we need to have a common denominator before we can proceed. So let's make the denominator the same by multiplying the first quantity by 4 over 4 and the second quantity by, not 4 over 4, 3 over 3. We want a common denominator of 12. The least common denominator of 4 and 3 would be 12. Of course, 24 would do the job and so would 24 billion. But the least common denominator, the smallest number that you can find, which will serve as a, as a denominator, as a common denominator, is 12. So we need to multiply this quantity by 3 over 3, hence making it 4 times 3, 12, and this one by 4 over 4. Let's, let's pick up. So 3 times 3 is 3 over 12, plus 2 times 4 is 8, 8 over 12, which adds up to 11 over 12. Since this is 11 over 12, that implies that, implies that 1 12th of the total, 1 12th of the total, must be green, must be green, because of course it has to, has to add up to 1, so 11th of a, ele, the red and the blue represent 11 twelfth of the total, which means 1 twelfth of the total, T is the total, must be green, which we know is 60, we are told the 60 of them are green, there you go, if 1 twelfth of T is 60, that in turn implies that total must be 12 times 60, that's it, we are done. We have to find out how many red they are. Red we know are one quarter. Let's do it here. So red we know is one quarter. One quarter of total, which we know is 12 times 60. 12 times 60. We are done. Divide top and bottom by 4. 12 will become 3 and the red must be 120. Red must be 120. Similarly, we can figure out the blue. The blues are two thirds. So the blues must be the two thirds of the total two-third of the total, which we know is 12 times 60. 12 times 60, divide top and bottom by 3. 3 will go away and 12 will become 4. And we are done. It's essentially 8 times 60. 2 times 4 is 8. 8, 6 are 48. We know 8, 6 are 48. We have a 0 at the end, which means blue must be 480. That's it. We are done. Now at the very end, if you want to verify your work, if you want to verify your work, you can add up the three figures and make sure that they add up to 12 times 60. And you can do that on your own. Let's move on to number 12. Number, second one, okay? Number 12. Number 12. As I always tell you, it's important to keep your work clean, neat and clean. It pays. Keep it organized, keep it neat. In the next problem, number 12, we are told that x is half of y. We are further told that y is a is a third is a third of z. The question is, what is the ratio of x to z? What's the ratio of x to z? It's a very simple straightforward proposition. We have three variables here. X to Y to Z. And we are told that the ratio of X to Y is half. X to Y is half. So whatever X is, Y must be twice as much. So if X is 1, Y must be 
2 because we know ratio of x to y has to be half has to be half if ratio of x to y is half if x is 1 y must be 2 furthermore we are told that y is a third of z y is a third of z so whatever y is z must be 3 times as much y is a third of z y is a third of z well y here is 2 at this stage in the game y is 2 if y is 2 z would have to be 6 we are done question is what's the ratio of x to z the answer is the ratio is 1 to 6 1 to 6 is the ratio of of x to z you understand let's do one more shall we number 3 number 13 number 13 is a very similar problem nothing to it same as before we are told that p is a third of q we are further told that q is a quarter of r question is what is the ratio what is the ratio of p to q to r p to q to r given the fact that p is a third of a q and q happens to be a quarter of r just find out shall we same as before nothing nothing is different so we have three variables p we have three variables p to q to r and we know p to q we know the ratio of p to q p to q p is a third of q p is a third of q so if p happens to be 1 q would be 3 because the ratio of p to q is one third we can put it here 1 to 3 before we move on in the story we are told that a q is a quarter of r a q is a quarter of r but the q happens to be 3 here at this stage in the game q is 3 well, if q is 3 and q has to be a quarter of r, then r must be 4 times as much. That's the only way r is going to be, that's the only way the ratio of q to r is going to be 1 fourth. Because we are told q is a quarter of r. q is a quarter of r. As you can see, 3 is the cancel out, it's 1 quarter. So that's it, r must be 12. You're done. There is your answer. Question was, what's the ratio of p to q to r? The answer is p to q to r, the ratio is 1 to 3. To 12. Let's move on, shall we? Let's move on. Number 14. Number 14. In number 14, we are told that uh, Mike's Mike's total monthly expenditure, Mike's total. monthly expenditure is $5,100. He spends a total of $5,100 every month. Mike's total expenditure is $5,100. His, his total expenditure is $5,100. Comma for food, three items. He spends money on three items for food, rent, and miscellaneous items. And miscellaneous items in the ratio of in the ratio in the ratio of one to three to five. The question is very simple. Question is very simple, very straightforward. Question simply is, what's his rent? What's his rent? What does he spend on the rent? Given the fact that he spends his money on three items: food, rent, and all the other things combined. All the other things are put together simply as miscellaneous. So if that's the case, he spends his money on food. Obviously, he has to eat, he has to live, and all the other stuff that he buys. He spends a total of five thousand one hundred dollars. What is his rent if he happens to spend in the ratio of 1 to 3 to 5? As you can see, food, rent, 
and miscellaneous item are in the ratio of 1 to 3 to 5, the total happens to be, the total happens to be 9 parts. 9 parts. His rent is 3 parts. His rent is 3 parts. So he must spend his rent, his rent is 3 parts out of 9, which means he must spend one third of his total expenditure on rent. One third of the total. His rent happens to be, let's, let's put a T here for total. His rent is, his rent must be, his rent is 3 parts out of 9 of the total amount. One th 3 ninth of the total, which is same as one third of the total. Well, we know what total amount he spends. He spends total of $5,100. So let's put it here. One third of $5,100, which we're going to write as 51, 51 times 100. It will make our life easier. Let's divide top and bottom by 3, shall we? Let's divide top and bottom by 3. If you divide bottom by 3, 3, of course, is going to go away. How many 3's does 5 have? 5 has 1 3. 5 has only 1 3. Once we take away 3 from the 5, we have a remainder of 2. That 2 goes and joins the 1 and becomes 21. And 21 happens to have 7 3's. In other words, 17 times 3 is 51. That's what we're trying to say. That's it. That's his rent must be 1700. 17 times 100. His rent is $1,700. That's all there was. Simple enough. Let's move on to number 5. Number 5. Number 15, that is not 5, number 15. It says, if the ratio, if the ratio of boys to girls in a class is 2 to 5, which of the following can not be the total number of kids in the class? And here are our answer choices A, B, C, D, E. We are given five answer choices. What they are trying to tell us is that out of five, four of these two numbers that are shown to us could be, it is possible for any four of these to be the total number of students in the class. One number is such that it cannot possibly be the total number of students in the class, given the fact that the kids have to be in the ratio of two to five, boys and girls. And the numbers are 21, 63, 105, 147, and 169. Well, let's find out, shall we? Let's do it on this side. Let's do it on this side. Well, if the total, if the ratio, if the ratio is 2 to 5, if the ratio is 2 to 5, the total is 7 parts, which means that tells us that the total number of students, whatever it is, must be a nice multiple of 7. Because you can't have 3 and a quarter boy and 5 and one third girl. They have to be integers, which means the total number of students whatever it is, must be a nice multiple of 7. You can clearly see that A works because 21, 21 is simply 3 times 7. It is a multiple of 7. So does B. B is simply 9 times 7. That works. 9 times 7. That works. What about 105? Let's find out. Let's find out if, if 105 is evenly divisible by 7 or not. Let's do it here. 105 divided by 7. How many 7 does 1 have? 1 has no 7s. 1 has no 7. 1 is just puny. That 1 goes and joins the 0 and becomes a 10. Now 10 can take on a 7. 1 could not take on a 7 by itself. 10 has 1 7. One, 10 has 1 7. After we take away 7 from the 10, we have a remainder of 3. That 3 is going to go and join the 5 and become 35. And 35 happens to have 5 7s. In other words, 15 times 7 is 105. 15 times 7 is of course 105, which should not be a surprise, which should not be a big surprise, because 105, you can clearly see, is made up of 70 plus 35. 70 plus 35 is 105, 7 is 10 times, 10 times, 7 is 10 times 7, or 70 is 10 times 7, and this is 5 times 7. So 
of course, is no surprise that 105 should be 15 times 7. The co point here is that it is a multiple of 7. It is a multiple of 7. So that works. That is possible. B is possible. C is possible. What about D? D we can clearly see is possible. It's 14 divided by 7 is 2 and 7 divided by 7 is 1. It is simply 21 times 7. We don't have to do anything there. It's just simply 21 times 7. Simple visual inspection. Simple visual inspection. In other words, just by looking at it, we can tell that 147 is divisible by 7. If you insist, we can do it out. It's very simple. 147 divided by 7. 14 has 2 7 and 7 has 1 7. Voila. It's 21 times 7. That is possible, which means the only answer choice that is left is 169. 169 must not be, must not be multiple of 7. Let's find out, shall we? Of course, it would have to be the answer because we have ruled out everything else. But let's find out nonetheless. Let's do it here. Let's see what we find, what we get. If we, if we were to try to divide 169 by 7. 169 divided by 7. Of course, they're giving this answer here for the for reason here. Because if you look at the last digits, they are all 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. That's, that's the game they're playing. 16 we know has 2 7. 16 has 2 7. After we take away 2 7s, seven, 2 7s are 14. After we take away 14 from the 16, we have a remainder of 2. That 2 will go and join the 9 and will become 29. And 29 happens to have 4 7s. Seven. 4 7s seven are 28 and we'll have a remainder of 1. We can't have a remainder of 1. We can't have a remainder of 1 because the ratio is 2 to 7. 2 to 7, boys and girls, if, if, the, if you have a remainder of 1, since the ratio is 2 to 7, we can't have 2 7 of a boy and a 5 7 of a girl. It's not possible to have 5 7 of a girl and 2 7 of a boy. They need to be integers, which is why the answer is E. 169 cannot possibly be the total number of students in the class where we are told that the ratio must be 2 to 7. That was question number 15. Let's do another question very similar to this one, very similar to this one on this side here. No difference, very similar as I said. Number 16. Number 16, we are told, we are told that last year, last year, Jalapi Autos produced five times as many cars as trucks. Which of the following which of the following, which is what which it was it said here also I was just two two lists to write it, which of the following it should say which of the following which of the following cannot cannot have been, not not be, have been, it's past tense, could not have been or had been, if you like, each of the following could not have been the total production. Total production of cars and trucks, that, uh, that is, do you understand? Let's find out, shall we? Answer choices are, we need the room, so I'm going to put the answer choices here. The answer choices that are given to us are A, B, C, D, E. 48,000 autos, 60,000, 90,000, 100,000, and finally 120,000. Very simple, very straightforward proposition here. All we need to understand is that the ratio must be, the ratios of cars to trucks must be 5 to 1. In other words, this particular firm, for every cars that they produce, for every 5 cars that is rather, for every 5 cars that they produce, they produce one truck. That was their ratio, that was their, that was their combination there. Based on that fact, which of the following cannot have been the total production? Well, as you can clearly see, 48, 48, because the total is 5 plus 1 is 6. The total number of vehicles that they produce must be such that it is a nice multiple of 6, must be divisible by 6, which 48 is. 48 is simply 8 times 6, 8, 6 of 48. So that works. 60, of course, works because 60 is simply 10 times 6. 
What about 90? Well, if 60 is 10 times 6, 60, 90 is just 30 more than 60. 90 is just 30 more than 60, and 30 is made up of 5 sixes. So if 60 has 10 sixes, 90 should have 15 sixes. That is a multiple of 6. What about 120? Of course, if 60 is a multiple of 6, then so is 120. If 60 is 10 times 6, 120 is going to be 20 times 6. The one that is not a multiple of 6, one that is not a multiple of 6 is 100. You cannot divide 100 evenly by 6. If you were to try to divide it, 100 by 6, let's see what we'll get. If you divide 100 by 6, 10 has 1 6. The remaining 4 goes and joins to 0, becomes 40, and 40 has, 40 has 6 6. 6 6 are 36. And after we take away 36 from the 40, we'll have a remainder of 4. And that remainder of 4 must be divided by 6. In other words, we'll end up with 16 and 4 6, or 16 and 2 3rd. As you can see, it's not a nice multiple of, it's not a, a ni nice integer here, it's not a nice multiple of 6. They could not have, they could not have possibly produced total of 100,000 100, vehicle if they produced cars and trucks in the ratio of 5 to 1. It is simply, it is simply, it is simply physically impossible for them to have produced 100,000 vehicles. you understand? 17. Number 17. Let's do it here. Number 17. It says, if, if A plus B is 25% of A, 25% of 7A rather, 25% of 7 times A, what is the ratio of A to B? What's the ratio of A to B if this is true? So let's find out. Let's make an equation out of it. We are told that A plus B, A plus B, A is, is means equals 25%, which means one quarter. One quarter represents 25% of 7A. Of means times. Of means times 7A. There you go. This is how we would read it. We would read A plus B, A plus B is, is means equal, there is your equal, is 25%, one quarter is 25%, times means of 7A. You see? A plus B is 25% of 7, just like that. Multiply both sides by 4 so we can get rid of the 4 from the bottom. I'm going to raise this circle around it. Multiply both sides by 4. So take this quantity, multiply it by 4. Take this side, multiply it by 4. So we can get rid of this 4 from the bottom. It's, go, it's going away. Here we end up with 7A and here we'll end up 4 times A plus 4 times B. 4 times A plus 4 times B would have to equal 7A. Subtract 4A from both sides. Subtract 4A from both sides. <coughs> and we end up with 7A. <coughs> 7a minus 4a, that's 3a, must equal 4b, must equal 4b, and we want the ratio of a to b, what's the ratio of a to b? So a over b, bring the b down here, and here is our 4, 4 is here, bring the 3 down, and we are done. The answer is 4 to 3. What's the ratio of a to b? The answer is a to b, the ratio is 4 to 3. They are in the ratio of 4 to 3. Let's do the next one, shall we? Let's do the next one. Question number 18. Question number 18. It says, property tax on a property worth sixty thousand dollars a property that is worth sixty thousand dollars property tax on that property is eight hundred dollars in this town which simply is what is the tax what is the property tax that is what is the property tax on a property that is worth $72,000. If it's worth $72,000, what's going to be the tax on it? 
And if you wish, if you wish to do this on your own, which I should have reminded you from the very beginning, it's a bit too late in the game, we already have to 18, but you should do this every single time. As soon as I set up the problem on the blackboard, if you wish to do it on your own, pause the video and try it yourself. That's how, that's how, you, that's how you're going to learn more. By being actively involved in it. Watch these videos with dedicated notebook where you can do the problems with me. And keep track of your work. On the top of the page, put down the date that you, today's date, and the session number or class number, whatever you want to call it. Keep track of your progress. Here we go. So we have property, we know that property that is worth $60,000, we're going to pay the tax of $80,000, $800. Question is, what is the tax, what is the amount of tax I'm going to pay? <coughs> Excuse me. How much money would I, would I end up paying in property taxes if my property happens to work? $72,000. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty straightforward. They're giving these numbers for a reason. They give you these nice numbers for a reason. They don't fall from the sky. If you, know, if you, if you, if you pay attention, you will see that $72,000 is simply made up of $60,000 and $12,000. And $12,000. 12 plus 60 is 72. 72. We further notice that 12,000 can be further broken into 6,000 and another 6,000. In other words, 60,000 plus 6,000 plus 6,000 is 72,000. We are done. We already know how, what the tax on 60,000 is. On 60,000, we know we are pay, we pay 800. So here's our tax on 60,000. 60, if you're paying $800 on 60,000, we must pay $80 on 6,000 and another $80 on this 6,000. That's it. We are done. The answer is 800 plus 80 plus 80. 80 plus 80 is 160. 160 plus 800 is going to be $960. The amount of tax that we'll end up paying is $960. That's all. Now that was that was what I would do. This is a quick and dirty way. If you insist, if you're hell-bent on it, if you're hell-bent on doing doing the problem in a classical way, the, the, the proper way, the goody-two-shoe way, the academic way, the classical, conventional, orthodox way, we can do that too. It's not a big deal. Let's do it here. So that we have a nice checked position of the two methods. Let's do, the math, do, let's do the problem in a very classical manner, shall we? Like your math teacher will expect you to do. Very mathematically. Like a good boy or a good girl, instead of doing this quick and dirty way. So in a, in a proper method, in a mathematical method, in, a, in, a, in an arithmetic method, we set it up as a proportion. We'll have the property tax. We'll have the property tax. And a value. We will have a proportion of tax versus value. We already know that the tax on 60,000, tax on 60,000 is 800. Question is, what's going to be the tax on 72,000? Notice I left out three zeros. Three zeros play no role. Three zeros play no role because I left out the three zeros here, but I also left out the three zeros here. It's 72,000. They play no role because they cancel out. Do you understand? So x must be, let's cross multiply here, if you cross multiply, we will end up with x equals to 72 times 800 over 60. Divide top and bottom by 10, if you divide top and bottom by 10, six, uh, 60 will become 6, 800 becomes 80, let's divide top and bottom by 6, because we know 72 is divisible by 6. If you divide top and bottom by 6, 7 has how many 6's? 7 has 1 6. 7 has 1 6. After we take away 6 from the 7, we have a remainder of 1. That 1 goes and joins the 12, becomes 12, and 12 has two sixes. 12 has two sixes. In other words, x happens to be 12 times 80, which is exactly what we found here. Which is exactly what we found here, because we found that the total amount of tax was, total amount of tax was 10 times 80, 10 times 80, plus 1 times 80, plus 1 times 80. As you can see, 12 times 80, 10 80s, 180, 180, 180 plus 180s, 280s, and 10 80s is 12 80s. That's exactly what we find here. Of course, why wouldn't we find something same, exact same answer? They would have to be the same. It's just a different method. But this is more of a classical way. Do you understand? Let's do the penultimate problem, the second to the last problem that is given to us. Let's do it here. We are told that the, a, a model car, number 19, 
A model car, we are told, is an exact replica, exact replica, it's an exact replica, is an exact copy in the ratio of as a replica, let's just put down 1 to 25. I'm not going to write everything. So there's exact replica in the ratio of 1 to 25. We are told that the actual car measures, car, the model car, not the actual car, the model car measures 9 and a quarter centimeter. What is the Approximate length of the car. What's the approximate approximate length of the actual car? If it turns out that the model car, which happens to be the exact replica in the ratio of 1 to 25, is exactly 9 and a quarter centimeter. But notice they're looking for approximate value. They're looking for approximate value, they're not looking for the exact value. So approximate value is what we shall give them. Let's do it here. We're not going to waste our time figuring out the precise value. Approximation is good enough. And as you look at the answer choice in the exam, you can figure out what the right answer is by as long as you do a decent job. So 9 and a quarter centimeter, the ratio is 1 to 25, which means the actual value must be 9 and a quarter times 25. Or if you like, 25 times 9 and a quarter, if it makes your life easier to follow the work. 25 times 9, how much is 25 times 9? Well, I know 25 times 10 is 250. That I do know. If 25 times 10 happens to be 250, then it stands to reason that 25 times 9 would have to be 225. Plus 25 times quarter. 1 quarter of 25. 1 quarter of 25. Well, how much is 1 quarter of 25? Well, that's very simple. We know 1 half of 25 is 12 and a half. If one half of 25 is 12 and a half, one quarter would have to be six and a quarter. Six and a quarter. Of course it would have to be six and a quarter. Of course it would have to be six and a quarter because six times four is 24 and four, four quarters will make another one, so it's 25. So 225 plus six, 225 plus six is 31, uh, uh, 310 rather in a quarter, you can, in the answer choice, not 310, rather 300, I'm, I'm thinking too much, you see, I'm thinking too much, 25 plus 5 is 30, so it's approximately 230. So in the answer choice, is they give you a whole bunch of numbers there, pick the one that comes closest to 230 and you're done. Let's do the last one, shall we? Let's do the last one. Number 20. It says a solution contains 13 gram of sugar per 100 cubic centimeter. Question is how much sugar is is present in 65 cubic centimeter. And the answer choices that are given to us 8.75. Those are the answer choices give, that are given to us. Three, five, six and a half, eight point four five, and eight point seven five. And here they're not looking for approximate. It, they do not use the word approximate. It says how much sugar is present in sixty-five cubic centimeter, which is why they give you such precise figures there. Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. Now, just because, just because, what I'm trying to make you understand is that just because the question itself does not use the word approximate does not mean that there is anything there preventing you from approximating. 
you have to be smart about it. If you try to do the precise calculation all the time, you'll end up spending an inordinate amount of time on a given question. Do you understand? An inordinate amount of time on a given question. And before I use the word juxtaposition, both the word juxtaposition and inordinate, these are vocabulary words from the GRE which we learn in our vocabulary lessons. If you're interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in vocabulary words. I don't have which day which learn it. We don't, I don't have it in front of me, but we learn this word. In ordinary simply means excessive, unreasonable, too much. If you do the precise calculation every single time, you'll end up, you'll find that you'll end up spending an inordinate amount of time on a given question. So even if the question actually does not say, does not use the word approximate, there's nothing there that prevents you from approximating and then figuring out the right answer must be. Let's see what we can do here. You'll see what I mean. So we know, let's set it up in a proportion problem. We have a proportion of sugar to solution. And we are told that we have 13 grams of sugar. The so sugar is presented in terms of gram. The solution is presented in terms of cubic centimeter. And we know that 13 grams of sugar is present in 100, gram, 100 cubic centimeter of sugar. The question is, how much would you have if the solution is only 65, 65 cubic centimeter? Let's find out, shall we? Just multiply both sides by 65 and we can get rid of 65 from the bottom here. So x would have to equal 13 times 65 over 100 and we are done. Over 100, we are done. 65 is a nice multiple of 5, 100 is a nice multiple of 5. Let's divide top and bottom by 5. 6 says 1, 5. After we take away 5 from the 6, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins a 5, becomes 15, and 15 has 3 fives. In other words, 13 times 5 is 65. Similarly, 10 has 2 fives, and 0, 0 has no fives. In other words, 20 times 5 is 100. Of course, 20 times 5 would have to be 100. We all know it. The 20 nickels make a dollar. 13 times 13. 13 times 13, which we also know, you must know your squares. You must know your squares by heart, 1 through 20. And if you do, you know right away, you would know right away that 13 times 13 is 169. 169 over 20 is x. Now, even though the question does not use the word approximation, we're not going to waste our time here trying to do the precise calculation. Let's approximate. Let's pretend that 169 is 170 divided by 20. You still with me in the question? Divide top and bottom by 10, 0 is going to go away, and what we're left is 17 divided by 2. Half of 16 is 8, therefore half of 17 is going to be 8 and a half. We are approximating. Approximating is all fine and dandy. As a matter of fact, that is exactly what you should be doing. Approximation is good, but you must always, always, always be fully cognizant whether you are underestimating or overestimating. As I said before, approximation is fine and dandy, but you must be completely aware of your work, completely cognizant of the work, whether you are in, in your approximation, in your rounding, did you just overestimate or did you just underestimate? What did we do here? It was supposed to be 169, we rounded that on figure to 170. So this figure that you see here is an overestimation. It's, it's, uh, the correct answer is slightly less than 8.5. There is only one answer choice that I see that is slightly less than 8.5. The answer would have to be 8.45. That was it. That was it for today. We did 10 problems. As I said, we're going to do six, six videos in a series. Next time we'll do the third in the series of six for the ratios and proportions. Okay? Bye now.